Hey YouTube, Guy Webs here. Finally, bring you a review of my most sought-after figure, SH Figure Arts Common Rider Zero One Rising Hopper. So I've been waiting to get this for a really long time. It came out in earlier this year, around February, and it became highly sought after because uh, he's a very popular figure. He's a new Common Rider. Well, not new with Saber coming up, but he's the first of the Raywat generation, and I had to wait for a really long time for the price to drop in. I have him right here at last. I don't have the packaging to this one with me, but I'll show you pictures of the packaging real quick. Aside from the relaxed open hands, the open resting hands that come on him when you take him out of the package, he comes with a pair of these uh, semi-pointing finger hands for his pose. The camera wants to focus. So he comes with mm, these semi-pointing hands, these mm, fist hands, these gripping hands for his bike, the progress key or his weapon, and an extra pointing finger hand. He doesn't come with his weapon, you'd have to get the SH Figure Arts Kamen Rider Vulcan which includes the briefcase slash sword weapon which I may actually get just only so I can uh, give the weapon to him and maybe sell the Vulcan figure because I don't really care for having the extra or secondary riders from Zero One but if you do want the weapon for Zero One right here, you have to get the Figure Arts Kamen Rider Vulcan. Alrighty, let's take a look at Aruto right here. Really nice head sculpt with the beautiful red compound eyes right here. The overall color scheme of the armor or parts are this kind of limey yellowy greenish color which looks really nice and as you can see in the picture I put before this that it does glow in the dark under UV light it's got his uh, horns or antennas right here which are hard plastic and they do seem kind of fragile so do be careful about that some red highlights over there some silver around the shoulder or traps area there's the chest right here. Really like Zero One's design a lot. And most of the suit is kind of this uh, semi gloss black with this uh, ribbed, not ribbed, uh, honeycomb texture in parts. Silver stripe right here, the red highlights. The belt is really nicely detailed. Nice clear plastic. You see the grasshopper insignia for a rising hopper. And the progress key does remove, like so. Just black with green. Put that back in. Legs right here, more of the armor and design. The bottom, at the back. So overall, it's really nicely detailed. It's very accurate to the suit. For Zero One's articulation, the head is on a double ball joint it rotates moves up and down and side to side and he has a ball joint at the base of the neck so together you can look down this much and up pretty decently that's not too bad at all it goes left and right any which way you want to diaphragm joint rotates only a little bit moves forward and back a little bit hindered by the shape of his uh, armor which I can forgive does pivot side to side a little bit too. The ball joint at the waist rotates, goes up and down and side to side. The shoulder pads move out a little bit, it's on a hinge and ball joint, like the most of the newer figure arts shoulder pads. So they do stay out of the way of the arm articulation. They come out to the side this much, just short of 90 degrees, which is not too bad. There's an armpit joint that swerves all the way around a little bit. And the arms rotate, bicep swivel, double jointed elbows, swivel and hinge at the wrist, wherever, which way you want it to. 
the hips are pretty interesting. It's kind of a combination of the old drop hinge figure arts hips and the kind of type 2.0 kind of hips where it's just a ball joint that doesn't drop down. So these do drop down, but the inside here, it's kind of the ball joint and kind of thing like some of the newer models. So it's kind of a combination between the two. I'm not really fond of this hip system. So you can kick forward pretty high, do his rider kick, and back pretty decently. Out to the side and this much. Thigh swivel, double jointed knees, ankles rotate, they go down, they do go up. He does have really good ankle pivot and a toe hinge so overall he has really nice articulation a nice blend of old and new and you'll be able to get him into lots of zero one like poses overall I highly recommend the SH Freeguards Kamen Rider Zero One to any and all Kamen Rider fans if you who are a fan of Zero One you love the Kamen Rider universe or if you're new to Kamen Rider and you want a figure to represent the first rider in the Reiwa era. You definitely want to add this figure to your collection. I think he's well worth it, well worth every penny. You will not regret it and you will not be disappointed to have it in your collection. You get a ton of great accessories. The sculpt is really nice and you also get the glow-in-the-dark feature under UV light which is really really cool. I think he's very fun to pose as you can see I simply just did and he already looks fantastic. The only con with this figure that I could really point out is he doesn't include anything else other than interchangeable hands and you have to get the figure arts Kamen Rider Vulcan to get his briefcase slash sword weapon which I think is a little bit disappointing but at the same time since Vulcan is a retail release it's not that bad and he's fairly easy to track down. In the way of price and availability SH Figure Arts Kamen Rider Zero One is now back to retail price and is easy to get unlike his initial price where he skyrocketed due to the popularity of the show and him being the first Reiwa writer to come out and being a very popular figure. Since then his price has dropped so you can pretty much get him anywhere for a pretty decent price much easier than before. So with that said guys, hope you guys enjoyed my review. If you want to support the channel, smash that subscribe button. If you enjoyed this video, smash that like button as well. And until next time, I'll catch you guys later. Guy Web signing out. Bye!